Coach, thanks for coming by as always. And do you just love drama or how does that work? Because you keep us on the edge of our seat, or at least the team did this past week. Walk me through that final minute plus of what else going on. We thought the game was over. Players thought the game was over. Walk me through the timeout, when it was decided to be taken, and then kind of the explanation of what happened from then. Well, really, I guess when the uh, timeout occurred there, we had, uh, again, our defensive coaches mentioned to say that we need a timeout, coach need a timeout. Our secondary didn't get the signal. Okay. They didn't get the call. So, call timeout. Yeah. So, it was definitely a timeout was called before the snap, uh, as far as that goes. Now, all the other stuff that yeah. went on, yeah. from my understanding here, as far as the Big South Conference, they had mentioned that they made a timing error. Sure was by the replay official, and that's kind of was it, and uh, we won the ball game, so thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, you'd hate to have to sort all that out if it had gone another way with an error like that, I'm sure. You guys block a kick there to win it. Third time in the last four years you guys have been in that scenario and blocked a kick. How much do you focus on that, whether it's in, in camp or in practice during the week? And, and is it a technique thing? Is it just a good athlete thing? How does it work out? How has it worked out so often in your favor? Well, there's a lot of people involved. It's yeah. not obviously the one person that maybe gets the block, he gets all the credit, he, and it is well deserved. But there's probably four or five other people that have to get a big push yeah. as we kind of tell them to change the line of scrimmage, knock them back at least two yards. We want the jumper. Uh, we think we had David King and really Corbin Jackson with yeah. the two jumpers in this case. They want to be jumping at the line of scrimmage. Uh, if they're jumping back one yard behind the line of scrimmage yeah. or two yards, they're not going to be able to get the kick uh, because we're anticipating a low kick. And so, therefore, the guys knocking back, I think it was a great story there, yeah. Jawan Wells and Tolan Avery were the big three guys that are knocking uh, the guys back. And then the guys made a great timing on the jump. You never know what the timing of the yeah. jump. The other thing is you have to get lined up correctly. So where the ball is going to be kicked over the uprights, you have to be kind of in the mm -hmm. middle area. So you got to be in the guard area or in the tackle gap area. It depends on how far is off the hash. So that's another adjustment by the jumpers have to make. And a lot of us were talking about that this week. How do you determine who your jumpers are? How do you determine who you want to put in those positions? Well, again, you always look at the things, the vertical jump. You yeah. look at some things that are other test scores that they've done, the guys that we think that have the great vertical jump. And then it's also a part about timing. Uh, Corbin Jackson, I remember watching him play basketball. Uh, so some of those kind of yeah. timing and different yeah. things of that nature come into play when you decide in certain people. And so, uh, again, we had him to be the designated guy, and uh, he came through in a great way. But, again, there were three or four other people sure. that definitely had to do their job to give him an opportunity. That's interesting. Well, Antonio Gandy golden another monster night, over 170 yards receiving for the second time this season. You have a lot of weapons. Even with that, do you go into a game thinking, boy, we really like this matchup with a specific receiver? Or maybe do you look more at we, if we can attack this defensive back? How do you determine, or do you with so many weapons, is it just pick your poison within the floor of the game? Yes, to be honest, it's all of the above. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that we don't look at matchups. We do. Uh, critical situation, we may say, hey, if we got an even deal here, let's go this way. Yeah. Uh, if we have a balanced situation, then you just read through your progression and make the best read, make the best throw. We feel good about all of our receivers. Again, we got about four, five, six guys really, yeah. that we actually rotate and we trust all of them. Well, it's all been working on the offensive side and on the defensive side. Some things I know you want to shore up defensively, a little, some miscommunication it looked like in the defensive backfield. I know there's the one busted play, but looking at that as a whole, some of the big plays that you allowed, are those easy fixes? Are those things do you feel like you can clean up rather quickly? Well, I think we can clean them up. I think we actually uh, decide to sell for the run a little yeah. bit more. We want to make sure we stop the number six, which was a very good uh, running yeah. back uh, booker. So we accomplished that. And uh, then we didn't know if they how much they would go into really throwing the football. They decided to go that route a little bit more than what we thought they would. But we forced that issue, and they executed to the best of their ability. So I'm not concerned. Our guys still made plays when they had to make them. They were a good football team. As far as I knew, they were getting better and better each and every yeah. week. Uh, they do have some talent uh, as far as Indiana State. Uh, so I think our guys are getting valuable reps. Uh, I think we're getting better and better each and every week. So our defense will be ready to go. This week you travel to number five, Jacksonville State. Of course, they came here and won a year ago. What do you remember from that game, and, and does that game matter? Do, you know, we always, the media always wants to play up all oh, revenge, motivation, all those things. How much does it really matter what happened a year ago? Oh, it matters a little bit. It doesn't matter a whole lot, but it matters a little yeah. bit because, uh, again, you have familiarity uh, on both sides. Sure. They do for us and we do for them. Certain people that played last ball game or last year's game and all that. So there is a different team, though. Yeah. We both got a different team at, the, at this point in time. And so 
They're going to make adjustments. We're going to make an yeah. adjustment. So it's a chess game real right now, and our guys are excited to play. That's the main thing is we're just trying to say we need to get better. And as long as we continue to do that, then we can have a greater chance to be successful. Different teams from a year ago. One thing that is the same is their running back, Rock Thomas. I know he's a guy you've mentioned as a strength of this team. In addition to him, what do you see as being the strengths of this Jacksonville State squad? What are you going to have to slow down? Well, uh, their coaching staff do a great job of getting their guys in position. Uh, I think their defensive line, their defensive side of the ball, their linebackers, their front seven are very, very, very strong. They have great length at their corners. They're six foot six one, six two guys there, and big, good size, two hundred pounds. So their defense, I'll say, is yeah. really, really, really their, their strong point. And they got a running back they can toss the ball to, give it 25, 30 times, and uh, it's going to be a very difficult challenge for us. But again, we're ready for the challenge, and let's go play, Coach. Can't start any better than 3-0. Congrats on the win so far. Good luck the rest of the way. We Thank appreciate you. it. To God be the glory. Absolutely.